Good afternoon, I'm Dr. Maples and welcome to my video log. Um, I've been practicing psychotherapy now for almost two decades and one of the things that I notice um, since the pandemic has hit, there's been a, um, a definite increase in depression, especially amongst children who are no longer able to um, to interact in the ways they used to, um, such as having schooling and um, having extracurricular activities. Myself being a parent of two children, um, one age 11, the other age 7, I, I noticed that um, firsthand from a parental perspective, um, the adversities that they're going through, um, as well as having more of a professional standpoint on depression and childhood itself. So that's one of the reasons that I wanted to, um, I wanted to speak out about um, childhood depression and help parents in general understand what it is. I apologize, first off, if you hear my birds in the background, I have birds in this office, so they will make um, sounds at times. And um, that's, I guess the, I guess that's um, the way the, the cookie rolls these days as we um, get work done wherever we can. What I'm going to start off with is just sort of a general um, case vignette to give parents an understanding of what it, what childhood depression may look like, especially in adolescents. And this case vignette is something I wrote. Um, it's sort of an amalgamation of. Um, of symptoms that we'll look at and we'll discuss ways to overcome those symptoms um, in after the vignettes presented. This is purely fictional. If it does even ring a bell, um, it's not intended. This is um, literally a fictional account of something that I created as a means to understand um, childhood depression. So John is a 16-year-old male, and he has been recently homeschooled due to the COVID-19 pandemic. In the 10th grade, John's academics were superb. He made honor roll with a 4.0 GPA and was active in sports, including volleyball and water polo. Homeschooling started off well for John. In the beginning, he was active in class, turning in all of his work on time, and his grades were stable. Um, he maintained them at a 4.0. In the early fall of 11th grade, John's mother noticed that he would sleep in longer, didn't quite seem to take care of himself the way he used to, and he'd often attend class in his pajamas and wouldn't even bother to get dressed. John's sleep was off at night. He would often game and be on the phone until 1 or 2 in the morning and would drag upon awakening. It was very hard to awake. He had gained weight during the home isolation and his parents were concerned for his well-being. While John has always been social, now he seems to lack interest, lack direction, and his grades are falling. John has never taken drugs or alcohol, but his per parents are concerned that something may be wrong. His grades have recently failed, and he seems blasé um, at best in all aspects of life. So this is a fictional presentation of a adolescent that may be um, undergoing some depression. It, it may not reach the... Um, threshold of a major depressive disorder, but um, this is something that you definitely want to have a professional look at if um, someone that you know is undergoing similar circumstances. <clears throat> a lot of times what happens um, as we adjust to new um, scenarios is we, we undergo a period where at first things um, are prototypical. They go on as is, but as time wears on, people can begin to lack luster for um, the things that they're engaged in. And this could really begin to shift the mood in a direction that is more downward focused. As people, we need to engage in um, activities that honor the body, the mind, and the spirit. And so one of the things that we see here is that John was active in sports as a means to um, keep himself up going. 
Sports are a very key component of keeping the endorphins and the brain moving, and that's really um, a biological foundation to keep ourselves out of a depression. And so part of what I see here in the um, vignette that I presented is that John, um, he's lacking exercise, he's lacking um, direction, and the things that once worked for him aren't simply working anymore. Um, when a person's active, they're actually in the process of creating balance in their life. And so a person that's active and exercising and moving throughout the day, they're exerting a specific amount of energy that allows them to naturally foster sleep at night. What we've noticed in um, since the beginning of the pandemic is that we tend to be stationary. We're educating via screens. I'm educating via screen right now. And this really... Um, Creates a creates a shift into not moving, and so we have to be very cognizant of our movement in general because that exerts the energy needed for us to naturally gravitate towards sleep at night. Our body is sort of like a bank, but it's a bank that completely replenishes itself for the day. And so, as you intake calories and it converts into energy, we have to. Um, we have to get those calories exerted and spent in order to create tiredness and uh, create the cycle of sleep that's again going to repeat the same cycle the next day. So what's happening here is in the physical realm, John's not moving. And so this is most likely going to create some sleep problems for him. As he looks at his phone, I don't have my phone. Oh wait, here it is. As he looks at his phone through the night and he's playing on whatever games he's playing on, um, my children, they're loving Fortnite these days, um, he's engaged and he's actively um, working his mind in a manner that allows some forms of pleasure to go on, but in essence, he's also getting that stimulation by again staying still. And so this is where the problem comes in from the physical aspect, is that he's working the mind, but he's not necessarily creating a means for the mind to experience things through physical exertion. And this is where body and mind come into play to create tiredness for a night. The other part here is the grades are beginning to fall off. Now, this is a major concern from a therapeutic standpoint because grades really are the first place that you'll begin to see work slipping. And this is really a telltale sign of a major depression going on. And if you see grades beginning to slip, this is a part where you need to bring in um, some aspects of help so the person can begin to reintegrate a different paradigm to um, shift focus more within either movement or making sense of what's going on so that they could overcome the barriers that are keeping them down. You know, he was active in class. He was doing water polo and volleyball. He was um, had a 4.0 GPA. And all of a sudden, he began to sleep in longer. Well, again, he's staying up later. Um, the mind's not tired, so it's seeking stimulation. It's not getting out as much, so in seeking stimulation from that manner, it's still staying stationary, and the energy's not exerting itself. And then he wakes up in the morning tired and not wanting to take care of himself. What's the use anyways to take care of yourself? Well, part of this is really the development of um, mood indices. And when a child's undergoing mood-related problems, it really, is, um, a, it really is a method of treatment to begin to shift the focus into um, where is the hope. One of the telltale symptoms you'll find with children with depression, even adults with depression, is that they tend to lack hope. And when they lack hope, they, they need to re-ignite um, the dream that's 
present. And so whatever dream was present here, this could be something that is elicited from parents. It could also be something that's directed by parents. What is it that, um, what is it that you guys, are, what are, is it that you're dreaming of? What do you want to do when you grow up? Having thoughts towards this creates future orientation, which in turn creates plans. Because in order to get from point A to point Z, you have to pass through B, C, D, E, F, and so on. Now, while John's grades may be slipping and maybe even failing, this may go contraindicative towards what it is his dreams are. And so this is where a wake-up call can occur within the parents. Um, it can also occur within interventions that a professional does with parents, um, trying to get the child back on direction. When they begin to foster the elements of that dream, excitement is what creates the means from that for that interest to develop. <clears throat> Excuse me. And while that interest is the catalyst for what will bring hope in the future, it's the work that creates the self-esteem that pulls the child out of the depression. Now, that work isn't a pulling up exercise. It's not a pick yourself up by the bootstraps like I've heard um, back when I was in the military. What it is, it's a pushing through. They push through that depression. They build self-esteem because they're doing the work needed to get in the direction that they want. Now, the last part here that I've written was about the effects of drugs and alcohol. Now, there, there's no evidence here, but this could be a comorbid condition. A lot of times when adolescents, um, when adolescents are depressed, they do turn to extra, um, extracurricular activities, even if it's a negative extra um, activity, such as drug use, to try and pick themselves up out from where they are. This is rampant culturally, um, even within the ideal that medications uplift people from um, what it is that they're dealing with. What's happening mostly um, within any biochemical reaction is that it creates a chemistry within the brain that may fool it for a while that, okay, it may not be depressed or whatnot. But what's left over is still the need to work on what it was that created that depression in the first place. Now, while this um, depression in this hypothetical example is situational, it started with COVID-19, and it may end with COVID-19. We don't necessarily know that because um, situational depressions can become more prevalent over time and may require medication intervention as well as psychotherapy. Psychotherapy on, um, has been shown to be about 65% effective in the treatment of um, clinical depression. Medication has been shown about as effective in the treatment of clinical depression as well. And so it's it with psychotherapy being six, about 65% effective, medication being about 65% effective, and a combination of the two showing about the same effectiveness rate, really what that tells us is we got to experiment with um, the least, the the area of least intervention and then move up as times needed to see what the person responds to. Not, not one key fits all doors. Um, you got to find the key that fits the door for treatment that your child may be incurring. So I hope this helps. Um, I wanted to address, you know, understanding depression and childhood from a clinical as well as a um, as well as a parental perspective uh, being a parent of two children I've seen how the pandemic has affected um, children firsthand and I see it from a professional standpoint also if your children are suffering depression or the um, examples that I gave here seem to sound familiar ring a bell 
contact a professional, contact your county mental health organization or contact um, 911 if your child presents an emergency, do contact um, 911 to let them know what's happening or take them to the nearest emergency room. There is help that is out there and that help can be beneficial not only to help your children through what's going on, but also to give you a greater understanding on um, ways that you could help um, intervene with your children, even if needed through the help of a professional. So until next time, I um, wish you well, and I hope all, I hope from the bottom of my heart that you're able to use this and take it, and hopefully you and your children could advance confidently in the direction of your dreams. I look forward to speaking with you again. Bye.